in 2024. Open your mouth, open your mouth and thank him. Lord, I thank you for making a way for me. Lord, I thank you for making a way for me where there seems to be no way. Thank you, Jesus. You are my way maker. You are a miracle worker. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. 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 Thank you for making a way for us. For the past 15 years, you have always made a way for us. You've always made a way for us. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of the name of Jesus. Jesus. Father. Holy Spirit. Thank you for all you have done for us this past 15 years. To you alone be all the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. I said amen. Let's give Jesus some praise. Come on, let's give Jesus some praise for 15 years of his faithfulness, 15 years of his favor, 15 years of his kindness. Come on, we have a reason to, to praise God. We have a reason to praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have no idea the most difficult calling in this part of the world is to be called to be a pastor. Africa is easy. But to be in the UK and to pastor <laughs> is the most difficult. That's why we don't take for granted how far the Lord has brought us. We don't take it for granted. We don't take it for granted. Because in the UK, Pharaoh is calling people on Sunday and giving them double shift. Pharaoh is calling and giving people double shift. And so you can imagine the competition between Pharaoh and God. Mammon and God. And in this earth realm, from the eyes of the world, Mammon is more powerful than God. That's why many obey Mammon than they obey God. But thank God you have chosen to obey God and not to obey Mammon. Well, on this 15th anniversary Thanksgiving Sunday, we have come to say, Father, thank you. Thank you. And in our standing position, please help me thank God with a shout and a clap and a praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. God has been good to us. Well, help me also appreciate all the pastors. 
for this past 15 years. Father, we thank you. Help me find the pastors. Help me find the pastors. Help me thank the leaders. For all the leaders. God bless you. God bless you, everyone that has served diligently. Help me thank all the church workers. All the church workers. And all the church members. All the children. All the babies. Help me thank them. Help me thank them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last but not the least, please help me thank my wife for faithfully standing this past 15 years. Even when in the eyes of men it seemed not to be working, they called us small pastors. <laughs> we are still standing. We are still here by the grace of God. Thank you for standing. Thank you. Thank you. From the depths of my heart, thank you. Thank you. As the past 15 years for us was a time of labor. But for the next 15 years, it's our time that we have labored to enter into the rest of the Lord. So hear me. In these 15 years, I'm telling you, it's our rest time. No more toiling. No more struggles. No more uncertainties. We have entered a new season. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Through all the evictions. Thank you. Thank you. times a house we're living in, they have to change the locks and we have to sleep outside. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for not giving up. God bless you for standing. Many would have quitted long ago, but you stood. You never complained once. Thank you. There were times we were evicted from our house and we were rescuing church members who had houses. We were renting. We were paying the banks to take not to repossess their house many many church members our clothes were in black bags <laughs> thank you for standing thank you We have learned to stay on one salary. Thank you for never saying it's my money. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. 
So the next 15 years for us, you're not going to envy us. You're going to see the blessing of the Lord break forth in our lives like never before. In an unusual way. So thank you. Thank you. Help me one more time. I appreciate my wife. God bless you. God bless you. I love you so much. I love you. Let's please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to share something briefly. Um, you know, as we are thanking everyone, we are not forgetting all the people who stood with us 15 years ago. Uh, we, we are not forgetting Bishop who came to help launch us as a church. Uh, Somebody is asking, where is Bishop? Uh, because it's the first Sunday of the year, we decided no, we'll let him. Uh, but the, when we move to the new place, Bishop will come and be a blessing to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, today is our Thanksgiving Sunday and we want to take time to praise God, but we don't have enough time, so we'll praise God in the second service. But I just want to share something briefly with us. In Jesus' name. So please turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Psalm 127, verse 1, verse 1. Psalm 127, verse 1. Psalm 127, verse 1. I read, it says, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. We are blessed by the reading of God's word. I want to share a two-part message on our 15th anniversary that I have titled, Unless the Lord Builds His House. And this is part one. Unless the Lord Builds His House. I want you to understand that the church belongs to Jesus. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So Jesus is the builder of the church. Jesus is the builder of the church. And once we have this understanding that Jesus is the builder of the church, then we know our place in the building. Amen. That's why the Bible says that unless the Lord builds the house, all of a sudden I'm coughing. I don't know where it's coming from, but amen. Actually, it reminds me um, 15 years ago, I had tonsillitis. And after the first Sunday, I think I wasn't in church second Sunday. Was it second or third? I can't remember. Third Sunday. I had tonsillitis and because of that, I wasn't in church. So for the first time in 15 years, Satan is trying to give me tonsillitis, but I refuse it. Amen. Well, so the builder of of the church is God. God says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so anything that is being built that does not have God in it cannot 
be built or cannot be completed. We saw in Genesis chapter 11 verse 1 to 9 when they were building the Tower of Babel. They tried to build it without God. And what happened? Even though they were of one voice, one language, one speech, and they had one vision, they couldn't build it. God saw that these people have planned to build something. Nothing could stop it. But because they didn't have God in the center of it, guess what happened? They couldn't build it. And so the Bible says that unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain, who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. The watchman stays awake in what? In vain. Second Kings chapter 6 tells us also, verse 15 to 18, how they came to kill Elisha. And Elisha's servant saw the chariots were surrounding them. And he was scared and he said, Master, what shall we do? But Elisha knew that God was his watchman. Elisha was at rest. He was at peace. And Elisha prayed that God would open his eyes to see. And when God opened his eyes, he saw chariots guarding them. What am I saying? These two things are key. Anything we want to build in this world, we must make God the builder and God the watchman. God the builder and God the watchman. Amen? God the builder and God the watchman. That's why God is a builder of this church. Not man. I'm not the builder of this church. I can't build this church. I don't have what it takes to build this church. So Jesus said, Matthew 16, 18 to 19, Jesus said, I say also to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So Jesus is a builder of the church. And the next thing Jesus says is that I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever you bind here on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you lose here on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So Jesus is the builder of the church. That's why in this church we don't say it's the pastor's church or it's the pastor's. No. No man can build this church. That's why it has never come out of my mouth, my church. Ah, me, my church. I can never build a church. I can never build a church. So, Jesus is the builder of the church. Amen? Jesus is the builder of the church. Listen, no man can claim credit to the growth of this church but God. Do you agree? No man can claim credit to the growth or the building of this church but God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 5 to 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 5 to 8. I read, it says, Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? Are ministers through whom you believed as the Lord gave to each one. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. <coughs> Who gives the increase? God. God gives the increase. Verse 7 it says, So then, it's neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters. But God who gives the increase. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, now he who plants and he who waters are one. And each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. And so, you see, 
Apollos, Paul plants, Apollos waters, but ultimately the increase comes from whom? Comes from God. The increase comes from whom? It comes from God because, listen, God is the ultimate builder of the church. Once we have this understanding, then the church continues to flow in the direction that God wants us to flow in. And listen, it's a privilege for us to be called to be fellow workers, fellow workers in the house of God. Amen. I said amen. amen. I said amen. amen. And when you are in a church that God is there, you know, don't you? You know. I don't know about you. I will not be in a place where the presence of God is not there. The Bible says that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. So God ordered your steps into this house. And as we allow God to build his church, his name alone will be glorified in Jesus' name. In all humility, this church began from nothing, but by the grace of God, has grown to become one of the largest in the whole of West Success. It can only be God. It can only be God. I said it can only be God. There is no church like this on this side of the world where you see different nationalities gathered together as one, giving glory to God. And to God alone be all the glory. Amen. Amen. Did you receive it today? Amen. Let's give Jesus some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we've come to the end of our first service. What a short service. In this church, we respect time. We respect God and we respect time. Well, today, um, before we close the first service and we'll go into the second service, today, by the grace of God, we're going to go and view the property that God has given us. So after the second service, if you want to be part of it, just stay behind and then we drive, it's less than five minutes from here so that we can all go and have a look at what God is doing. Amen. I'm telling you, uh, what God is doing is beyond human understanding. It's the favor of God. And so I want us all to go and be part of it. We are hopefully, by God's grace, we're going to step in there and then see where we'll be worshiping. Uh, in the next few weeks, by the grace of God, in Jesus' name, amen. Did you receive it today? Yeah. Let's give Jesus some praise. Yeah. Hallelujah.